wonderful dear friends. It is Monday morning and I'm so happy to see you for another story time with Miss A, brought to you by the Northeast branch of the Reading Public Library. Did you have a good weekend? Did you do something fun? Well, I spent the whole weekend reading about famous women through history for Women's History Month and I just couldn't wait to share with you a book all about the famous scientist Mary Curie. And this biography is read with permission from Macmillan Publisher and it's called Mary Curie by Demi. So there is the famous woman herself on the front, Mary Curie. Now she was a famous scientist, especially a famous chemist. She did chemistry. Do you know what that is? That's when you mix different things together or you study different elements, different things in this world. So we're going to read this book together and then we're going to do our very own chemistry experiment together. So if you want to do that activity, make sure you pick up a Go Pack at the Northeast branch of Reading Public Library on 11th and Pike Street and it will have everything you need to make our invisible ink experiment. But first, let's read our book and find out all about the famous Mary Curie. Mary Curie by Demi. And what do we see here? We see an atom. And what are these things all around the corner? Well, those are different pieces of science equipment that she would have used when she was alive. So they're not instruments that, not all of them are instruments we use anymore, but we'll find out when she was born and why they use them then. So it says on November 7th, 1867, Maria Solomia Sklodowska was born at 16 Freta Street in Warsaw, Poland. Her family nicknamed her Mania. But one day she would be known by another name. Mary Curie, one of the greatest scientists who ever lived. Her mother was the principal of a school for girls and her father was a math and physics teacher. One of Manya's earliest memories was of her father's cabinet full of scientific instruments. So these are the instruments we actually saw on that title page. Manya didn't know what the instruments were for but they fascinated her. Surrounded by three older sisters and a brother who all loved books, Manya figured out how to read at just four years old. One, two, three, four. Manya loved to learn and was always at the top of her class, even though she was two years younger than the other children. But life in Poland was very difficult. Warsaw was occupied by Tsarist Russia and the Polish people had no freedom. Manya did all her lessons in Russian, but she also spoke fluent Polish and French. That is a lot of languages, three languages. Do you speak more than one language? Life at home was also difficult. When Manya was eight, her eldest sister, Zoja, died of a disease called typhus. Just two years later, her mother died of tuberculosis, a lung disease. Manya began doing many of the jobs her mother had done at home, but she also started to work even harder on her lessons. Because girls in Poland were not allowed to go to university, Manya and her sister Bronia wanted to study in Paris. Can you believe that? Women were not allowed to study at college in Poland. That sounds like a shame. So they wanted to study in Paris, but their family did not have enough money for them both to go. Well, the two sisters made a deal. Bronia would go to Paris to study medicine while Manya worked to support her. Then, after Bronia finished school, she would help Manya as Manya completed her studies. In 1866, Manya worked as a governess to the children of a wealthy family who owned a beet sugar factory north of Warsaw. She also taught poor local children to read and write. 
So do you know what a governess is? A governess is basically a teacher who would live with the children of a wealthy family. On her own, Manya did not stop learning. She dreamed of Paris and the Sorbonne, a famous university where she could attend formal classes, learn from brilliant professors, and even use a laboratory for her own experiments. When Bronya completed her studies in 1890, she kept her promise to Manya. She became engaged to a fellow medical student and invited her youngest sister to live with them in Paris. So she's in Paris here. But Manya decided that she preferred to live on her own. She came to Paris from Poland on a train ride that took 40 hours. Wow, that is a long train ride, 40 hours. Well, that's more than one day. One day is 24 hours. She was on that train ride for almost two whole days. In November of 1891, Manya enrolled at the Sorbonne as Marie Sklodowska. But this, by this time, she had forgotten some of her French and she didn't have very much money, but she was excited. Her dreams were finally coming true. Do you have a dream? A job you'd like to do someday? A place you'd like to go? Well, you can imagine how excited you'd feel if you got that dream, and that is exactly how Marie Manya was feeling right then. In 1895, she graduated first in her class with an advanced degree in physics and a scholarship for the next year. In 1894, she graduated second in her class with a degree in mathematics. While completing these degrees, Marie met another brilliant mind. She was introduced to Pierre Curie by a friend and fellow Polish physicist. Pierre immediately recognized her intelligence. Marie was impressed by his work. So, they fell in love based around science. Pierre and his brother Jacques had made important discoveries while studying electricity, magnetism, heat, and crystals. To together they invented the electrometer, an instrument that measures elect electricity given off by crystals and other types of matter. Their ideas are used today in mobile phones, quartz watches, and record players. So there is her husband, Pierre. Although Pierre was much older than Marie, they fell in love and were married in 1895. They celebrated by bicycling through the French countryside. When they returned, Marie studied to become a teacher and Pierre eventually became a professor in Paris. So there they are on their countryside bike ride. Marie continued to research, run the household, cook and clean, and in 1897, she gave birth to their daughter, Irene. The new mother was busy, but that did not slow her down. Thankfully, Pierre's father came to help with the baby. So just because she was a new mother did not mean she abandoned her passion for science. And look at this building. You see all these holes in the roof? Does this look like a very nice laboratory? No, it's not the best, but let's hear what she has to say. It says, with a child at home, Marie needed a place to continue her experiments. At Pierre's School of Physics and Industrial Chemistry, there was a leaky old shed that was cold and damp, but it was empty and it was hers. There, Marie decided to study the mysterious energy given off by a metallic element called uranium. She began her research by looking for other things that gave off the same invisible rays. She soon found the element thorium did too. Her research was so successful that Pierre left his work to join hers. So that is a good supportive husband right there. She had really successful research so he quit his job to help her with her research. Marie now knew any solid matter that contained uranium or thorium gave off rays, but nobody knew the cause. 
Marie decided to find out. She started by looking for something unseen, a new element unlike any other known to man. A mineral called pitch blend contained both uranium and thorium, so the Curies ordered several tons to test Marie's theory. So that's a lot of pitch blend. First, she ground the rock to powder and then dissolved it in acid over and over again to separate all the different elements that made up the pitch blend. After everything was finally removed, Marie and Pierre found that pitch blend gave off radiation much greater than could be explained by the remaining uranium. Marie and Pierre realized they had discovered not one, but two new elements. They called the first new metal polonium in honor of Marie's homeland, Poland. The second element they called radium. They also created the word radioactive to describe substances that emitted rays of radiation. So you've probably heard of radiation before. So sometimes if someone has cancer, they get radiation therapy to help remove it. And we'll learn about that a little bit later. Marie wrote about their findings, but other scientists were doubtful and demanded that the couple prove their results by figuring out the new element's atomic weight. For four years, Marie and Pierre worked on this tricky problem. They removed all the known elements from the purified pitch blend until one day, the only thing left was a tiny speck, a teeny tiny speck in a little glass container. They were not quite sure what to make of it. So you can't even see it on the page. It's teeny, teeny, tiny. But in bed that night, the two scientists tossed and turned, wondering if something had gone wrong. Marie and Pierre decided they couldn't sleep until they had figured it out. They headed back to the lab in the middle of the night. It was pitch black as they stumbled inside, except for one teeny tiny spot. There on the table, glowing in the darkness, was a tiny speck of light from Marie's little glass container. The Curie's finally had their pure radium. You can see the little speck there, glowing in the dark. Although they had managed to isolate only a tiny amount of radium, Marie was able to calculate its atomic weight. They continued working in the old shed, but soon some interesting and painful problems arose. Although radiation from uranium had seemed harmless, radium was much much stronger. Everything in the shed became radioactive. That's very dangerous. Marie and Pierre developed blisters and sores on the backs of their hands that would not heal for months. If they tried to carry a small tube of radium in a jacket pocket, it would burn their skin right through the glass and fabric. You can see here Marie is bandaging up Pierre's hands after he's burned himself from radiation. They realized that radium's ability to burn skin might have a surprising use. If it could burn healthy flesh, it might also be able to burn away unhealthy parts, parts that had cancer. Marie and Pierre had stumbled upon one of the greatest contributions to the world of modern medicine. The year 1903 ended with the Curies receiving the most prestigious award of all, the Nobel Prize in Physics. So like I said, we use radium still today in its radioactive qualities to have radiation to get rid of cancer. And they won the Nobel Prize for that. In the following year, the Curies had their second daughter, Eve, and Pierre accepted a job teaching at the Sorbonne. Although Pierre began to feel weak, a hint at the unknown dangers of radium, the hard work and research seemed to be paying off. The growing family was happy. Oh no, what do we see in this picture? It says that on Thursday, April 19, 1906, everything changed. It was a rainy afternoon when Pierre stepped out of a meeting with a fellow professor. 
Not wanting to get too wet, he decided to run to his next appointment. But as he crossed the busy, narrow street, Pierre accidentally stepped into traffic and was struck by a wagon, which killed him instantly. Although Marie was devastated, I mean, she was very, very sad. She refused to let her sadness interfere with her work. Instead, she took over Pierre's classes and became the first female professor at the Sorbonne. Marie continued her juggling act of teaching, researching, and caring for her daughters. She even found time to prove once and for all that radium and polonium existed after Lord Kelvin, a British scientist, challenged her findings. On November 7, 1911, Marie was awarded a second Nobel Prize this time in chemistry, for the discovery of the elements radium and polonium. Marie traveled to Stockholm and received the medal from the King of Sweden himself, making her the first person to win the Nobel Prize twice. So not only was she the first female professor at the Sorbonne, but she was the first person, man or woman, to win two Nobel Prizes. Then in the summer of 1914, France went to war. The German army began closing in on Paris and many soldiers were injured and dying. Well, Mar Marie understood that X-ring soldiers quickly often meant the difference between life and death. Marie had a truck turned into a mobile X-ray machine that could drive to the wounded and X-ray them. So the X-ray is when we see what's inside of our bodies. Eventually, she organized a whole fleet of 20 X-ray ambulances called Little Curies. By the end of World War I in 1918, more than one million wounded men had been X-rayed, thanks to Mary Curie. For all of her work, Marie was invited to travel to America to accept a gram of radium worth $100,000 for her research. When she arrived in the spring of 1921, she received a hero's welcome and was honored at the White House by President Warren Harding. Since its discovery, radium had become very popular. People drank it to cure arthritis and companies put it in lipstick and face powder to make skin shine. Shampoo, soap, chocolate bars, and toothpaste all contained radium. The element was even painted on watches and aluminum airplane instruments to make them glow in the dark. Female factory workers who painted these watches and instruments were called radium girls. As they painted, they would moisten the tips of their brushes in their mouths again and again to keep a very fine point. Some of the girls painted their teeth and fingernails with the glowing paint for fun, but eventually, the girls began to notice that when they sneezed into their handkerchiefs, their handkerchiefs glowed in the dark. Then they started to lose their teeth. They had accidentally poisoned themselves with radium. Remember earlier, Pierre and Marie were getting sores all over their hands and burns from the radium. So that's not something you want to put in your mouth. By the mid-1920s, scientists recognized the dangers of radioactivity. They realized that radiation given off from radium could both kill and cure. Although scientists began using protection when working with radiation, Marie had already started to become ill from all her years of exposure. On July 4, 1934, Marie Curie died in the French Alps at the age of 66. So eventually all that exposure to radium was poisonous to her body. Marie Curie's tireless research came at a great cost, but her discoveries also greatly improved life. She and her husband had successfully developed a new weapon in the fight against cancer. And Marie's ideas about the atom helped her daughter Irene unlock the power of nuclear energy. Marie was convinced that humanity would draw more good than evil from new discoveries. And so, Throughout her life's work, she never hesitated in the pursuit of knowledge. The end. So what do you think of Mary Curie? Personally, I find her really inspiring. And I just love the relationship between her and Pierre. 
that they loved each other and encouraged each other's work, especially in a time when women were regarded with less consideration than men. It must have been rare to find a husband that would be so supportive. But, I mean, how could he not be when clearly Marie was really just a very, very intelligent person. So now, if you stay with us, we are going to try our own hands at being chemists. And if you grab a go pack, it'll have everything you need so that you can make invisible ink and then a solution that will uncover it. Now I'd like to point out that there is rubbing alcohol that will be used in this experiment. Now kids, it's very important you remember, this is not for drinking, it's not for putting in your mouth. And we also don't wanna be rubbing it on our skin, okay? We are going to just probably have an adult measure it out into a cup. And then we're only going to be using our paintbrush to paint it on. So remember, rubbing alcohol, it does not go in our eyes. It does not go in our mouth. It's just going to go on our paintbrush and paper, okay? Now let's start the activity. Hi, right, friends, it's Angelique. I'll be up here while you watch my hands down here. So as I mentioned before, we are going to be making invisible ink. Now this is all about chemical reactions, something Mary Curie will be very familiar with. So this is going to work in two steps. We are going to make our invisible ink first, we're going to let it dry, and then we are going to make a reagent. So we're going to make a, so we are going to make a solution that we're going to paint on top and which will reveal our message. So the first thing that we're going to do is make our ink. So I've already measured out a half cup of water. You should use a measuring cup if you have one at home, but otherwise you can guesstimate it. And I'm going to pour it into one of my two cups. You'll need two cups for this activity. Then you'll need to mix it with one tablespoon of baking soda. If you got a go pack at Northeast, your baking soda should come in this. So I just pour it right in, and then I'm going to mix it together. And I'm just going to use my paintbrush to mix it. So I mix it nice and well. And once it's all mixed up, you're just going to take it, your solution, it should be basically clear with a little bit of cloudiness from the baking soda, and you're going to paint it onto the paper. So you should probably be able to see it a little bit because it'll be wet, but once it dries, you shouldn't be able to see it at all. So I'm going to write you a secret message, which you will only see once we paint the solution on top. Okay, so my message is done. If you want to use that same paintbrush for your solution to uncover it later, what you should do is rinse it off. But mostly, what you want to do now is just let this sit here and dry, and then we're going to come back to it to make our solution once it is completely dry. So it should take probably about 15 minutes, but you might want to check on it, but you shouldn't see the message then. Once it dries, it should be pretty much impossible to see. So I'll see you back in 15 minutes. All right, friends, so I've left for a little while, and as you can see, this paper is dry. You hopefully can't see the message shining through in the light. Yeah, even if you hold it up to the light, you can't see what it says. So I'd say this ink is pretty invisible. As you can see, I've laid some more paper underneath this. This is just because when we are making our solution next, Turmeric can be extremely staining, so I recommend you cover your paper with either a disposable tablecloth or one you don't mind if it gets a little dirty, maybe some newspapers, some other papers, and just try not to wipe it on your white clothes. So I'm being a little daring here because turmeric can stain and I'm wearing a white shirt. So let's start by making our solution. We'll start by taking our measuring cup again. And I'm going to take our rubbing alcohol, our isopropyl alcohol. Let's see if I can get this lid off. And we're going to take the rubbing alcohol and pour a half cup into here. 
Smells like a doctor's office. Okay, so we're going to pour our rubbing alcohol into this cup. Half a cup of that. And then we have one teaspoon of turmeric. If you smell it, it smells nice. Quite strong. It's a very bright, vibrant brownish yellow. So we're going to take a whole teaspoon, put it into our half cup of rubbing alcohol. You could use a spoon to stir, but again, I'm just going to use my paintbrush and stir this up. It has a very vibrant color. So if this works like I saw it online, because I'm doing it for the first time with you, it looks like this should brush on yellow and our text underneath should turn a bright, vibrant red. So I'm going to turn my secret message towards you, so hopefully you'll be able to read it as I brush this on. But we're just going to stir until our turmeric is nice and dissolved in our alcohol. And remember kids, do not eat this. Do not put it in your mouth, in your nose, in your eyes, not on your skin because turmeric can stain. This is just going on our page. So once it's stirred together, we're going to brush it on. And yes, it works. I can already see my message appearing. Let me paint all this on and see if you can read my message. You can see the words that I put more of the invisible ink on, they turn a brighter red. So it's a good idea if you haven't done it yet or you're doing it again, use more of the ink. Maybe use a couple times. You can still see the other one fine, but you'll be able to get a more vibrant color if you use more than one pass of the ink. And if you do this with a friend or if you want to do this with your parent, grandparent, older sibling, whoever is watching this video with you, you could write each other a secret message or draw each other a picture with the invisible ink. And then you could unveil each other's messages using the turmeric solution. Just an idea, but I think it would be a lot of fun. Okay, so I've unveiled my whole message. Let's see if you can hopefully see this from the camera. It says, hello friends from Miss A. But while this says hello, it's actually time to say goodbye. So I hope you've had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you keep trying this craft, maybe send some messages back and forth with your family or friends. And I hope you enjoyed learning about the life of Mary Curie and make sure you join us next Monday at 10 a.m. for another Storytime with Miss A, brought to you by the Northeast Branch Library. Bye, friends.